We have a messy spa after uh, last night's shenanigans and uh, today I've come here and I've got done a typical maintenance and I want to show you guys what you have to do with a um, Hydrojet Pro because apparently on the Hydrojet Pro um, back washing is not as easy to do as on the normal ones uh, because of the uh, massage function um, so uh, what I noticed is that when you, you, you backwashing tends to um, occur when you get a fault on this uh, unit saying EO3 I think it is EO3 and then it, there's nothing wrong with it it just means that the, like any other swimming pool pump you need to backwash the unit and I'll show you why and that's why I made this quick incognito video no matter what I do with my filter and you can wash this thing out as much as time as I'm going to show you how to do it in a second. You find stuff coming through the pump. Look at all this hair and fiber. I don't know how it gets through, but it's it's uh, it's getting through. It's just fiber, and there's hair in there too. I don't know how it's doing it, but it's getting in and it's causing havoc inside the machine. So we need to find a way to backwash this unit. Now and typically on the manuals for these machines the instructions are explain how to do the backwash function um, but in this unit you've got to call the best way <laughs> uh, and then again there's like banking hours so you can never get all of them. What I found to do was I used the exact same principle of flushing water in this inlet here back out it comes out there <clears throat> there's a b and c now i haven't written there's no legend on here which shows you a b c um which ports which but i will be permanent marking on mine and i'm going to do another video which shows you the backwash i'm not going to do it now because i've got to train all this water out which will take forever um but i backwash in yeah put a hose in there right down in and wash it out for about five minutes flushing through it comes out uh think of the top one and then I reverse it after five minutes and push clean water through the other way. And I just repeat that twice, three times. Faults should go away and it works fine. You can hear the pumps, you know, um, humming away nicely as well. This is just a chlorine dispenser. And typically I put, uh, obviously I test my water. And I, took, I put two in there and I put one in the floater over there. So three is normally always good enough for heavy volume usage. Uh, a bit overkill, but I'm I'm just a bit pedantic. It, it, it does help. It keeps uh, it keeps me having to use clarifier and other things in the water. Uh, I don't have to do anything else to the water. I typically, just keep the chlorine strong, not too strong, um, but it's enough to keep the water clear. And there's no no uh, bacteria or anything growing in here, so it's it, it's absolutely fantastic every time you climb in. I have a little pH meter, be careful these things are not waterproof as they should be, but they're not, and uh, I try and, I just, I've been with luck, I found that I've managed to keep this uh, around the 7.5 mark, it goes down, but it doesn't go be below 7, um, the acidity is perfect, you know, this, this to me is great, I wouldn't fuss about anything else, I wouldn't put anything else in at this time. Um, there was a period when I was I had hard water in here. I don't know what they'd done up in the council, but um, I was getting really hard water in here, and I had to use uh, a softener. And I just got um, a tin of uh, pH increase, which really is just sodium chloride. I've got a bag of sodium chloride as well, um, which you mix in there and you throw it in with a jar of pre-mixed water. Just put two liters of it. I've actually used a lot more than I had to. Uh, what they recommend, and uh, it's sent the uh, pH up to eight or nine. And it makes the water too cloudy and too soft, so I just wouldn't bother. Anyway, cleaning these things out is a is a bit of a job, but it's worth doing. Rather than just replacing filters all the time, oh, let's put you guys down. Um, one second. Hold on. Rather than replacing filters all the time, I don't do that. I just open this guy up <coughs> like this. Show you guys 
show you properly. Okay, now I use these. They work great, but obviously you can see I had a little hole <laughs> where things must have got through on my filter. Manky as hell. Terrible. But that's a new filter. And you know, to just throw these things away every time is just mental. I just wouldn't do it. Rather just throw the cloth away. Seriously, it doesn't affect the duty of the pump at all. Um, that gets rid of most of the macro residue. Wash the rest off in soapy water. Which I'll do now, demonstrate now. God, that's too hot. You don't need to overkill it or go crazy. Because you see, the cloth has done most of the work. But I see that a lot of the stuff has just gone through. It's strange. Huh? It's really strange how it just gets more messy. Um, I mean, this is this this filter hasn't even been in there two weeks. Uh, really important. And you saw the residue coming out of the out of the pump. So that's definitely something that needs to be worked on. But I don't faff with leaving things to soak or anything like that. You just put some dishwashing liquid in, which I'm running out of. And then I just play around with it, really. Just give it a good old scrub later on with a brush. Look how much, uh, look how milky that is. Um, that's setting it to work right there. I'm going to throw this away now. Um, what I do with these is I roll one out. I have some pre-cut, actually. I think I've got them in the... Jesus, I hate using these phones. Oh, sorry. Oh. Mm. I should have some pre-cut ones here somewhere. Uh, and what I do is I staple them. There it is. I just put a staple in around the filter and done. Make it nice and tight. I'll show you how to do it in a second. I'm going to do all this washing up first. Point this putting together until you're finished. That's clean. The cap is clean. Always check your rubber. Make sure the seal's nice and clean and there's nothing in, stuck inside, because trust me, stuff gets in here all the time. Okay, uh, park that one side. These little flat things also need inspection every now and then, but because I'm holding my phone, it's really hard to do. Uh, so basically, you just with water pressure, push it down. There's not a lot of pressure. On, um, they're not at very high tension. They're just very soft, so the slightest amount of water draws them in. I do use a scrubber for this, you know, um, just a brush. Where is my brush? What you done with my brush? Oh. I have to improvise. Do you know where the brush is? The brush. Yeah, it's just gone. All oh, right. Cool. Yeah. I need to. Bro oh, you should see this filter, man. Can you film this, please? Mm -hmm. Thanks. So you just. It's filming, gone off. Oh God, it's filthy. I just can't believe. Even with the filter. Is it on or not? Yeah, 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 it's on. Even with the filter, there's loads getting in here. I just mm. can't believe it. I think it's, uh, I think I need to actually do something better than this. The system doesn't seem to be working. You just give it a good rinse. Boom, boom, boom. Then you take your uh, cloth, roll it up nice and tight. Roll it up nice and tight, and then what I do is I staple it <sighs> on the seam. Just slide that, <laughs> slide that in there. Boosh, and the other side, and then <clears throat> that's too loose. <sighs> Now carefully put it in so it doesn't obstruct anything. I'm not doing this right, you know. I must. I'll do this much more tidier. 
because it's got to seat properly, otherwise things are just going to go through. Um, don't overdo uh, tightening this, because if you do, the rim cracks. It's very soft plastic, it's not made of strong stuff, so just put, just lightly finger tighten that nut on there so that the seal seats perfectly fine and that's really all you need to do and you do that depending on usage well typically one twice a week if you're using it every night i do it every i do it two to two, two twice a week washing this thing out so let's go put it back i mean we need to show these guys how to do the back washing Backwashing, you need to um, drain this pool and then put new water in. I'm seeing lots and lots of hair and fluff in here. You need to come here, my Because mm -hmm. uh, you're too far away. Yeah, you're too far away. Look, there's all this junk as well, so it's always good before you start the pump to give us a place a good old clean. Um, what we're going to do is get a tent. Not a tent, or like a gazebo thing over this whole unit for winter. We'll do that to insulate the machine, but we'll also do it to stop all this residue and stuff flying around, falling in here because it's unnecessary. It's just unnecessary cleaning. You can see I use a fish tank uh, net with the stocking, just a nice pair of tights. What? Uh, what sheerness is this tight? Medium? What do you think? <laughs> is this medium, you think? Or? I don't know. This size, this type of stocking is about a medium. No, I don't use the stocking in a way. Oh. It's very handy for uh, cleaning out this thing. Because a lot of the residue is very small. Then it goes right through your net. <sighs> so. Oh. There's a lot of hair and stuff in here. Um, okay. That cleans it off. And then you have like a, what also helps is a little, I should get a shampoo bottle and then you glue it on the end here. You cut the shampoo bottle up like a cone. You stick it on the end and this thing works like a vacuum cleaner. And then you just siphon, all right. <coughs> Siphon really good. If you don't do it, do it again. Like while that runs, you just uh, go along in here and you suck up all these other bits along the floor. And it works like a very handy vacuum cleaner and it takes about 10, 15 minutes to do. A really good job. Just cleans off all the muck. Go around the filters if you can. Uh, just go nice and steady, don't swirl the water around because that's why it's just swirling the sediment too and you'll never catch anything. There's some bits that float midway in the pool, try and catch them as well. Uh, you don't have to be this pedantic about it but there's nothing better than climbing into a clean, nice clean pool man. It's always worth it and if, to look here you know you can see it doesn't look too bad eh. We've done all right. Typically the sediment tends to hang around in the corners here. Yeah? Um, so these are the first places to go. There's some hairs lying midway. <laughs> so that's what's really cool about this method. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a little hose and a little bit of can do and sweat. And you clean this pool nicely. You don't need to go by. Loads of gadgets and fancy, fancy gubbins, plastic stuff lying around your garden, you know, it just clutters everything. You don't need that stuff. You want space in a small garden. And so, having lots of gadgetry just doesn't help. There you go. This is such a small space to clean, it's not a problem. My mum's had a cleaner swimming pool for years and years and to her it was always an uphill battle 
trying to get the clarification and the chlorine and the pH and it was an absolute nightmare every time it rains and then does all the hard work. With this thing, I don't have a problem. I think I've run out of vacuum. We're done anyway. Okay, so that's a basic maintenance skin up here. That's a basic maintenance schedule on how to clean one of these things. Uh, you can keep to the regime of the keeping the, the pool at a maximum level, but there's such a high rate of evaporation in here. If you keep this around 36, 35 degrees, that's an optimum temperature for this. Um, we don't need to go higher than that. On the coldest of days, it's lovely. And even on a hot day, it feels refreshing. On the hottest day, like now, you probably want to go down to about 32. So if you keep it between 32 and 36, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's, it's easy to clean. There's no trouble. Uh, you just got to keep maintaining it. And we'll do another video on the back wash function in more detail. Oh yeah, another thing. When I put this back, I always flood it with water. Just so that the air doesn't get through the pump and then you airlock and then you have all sorts of issues there. You don't want you don't want your pump to be stressed out, you know, it's already having to deal with stray hairs and stuff coming through. Uh, I fear that you know you put extra tension on that pump, it's gonna just weaken it. I don't believe these things are made with strong durable products. You know, it's just not made with endurance in mind. So be very wary of you know plastic components, plastic impellers, um, plastic and rubber pump seals in these things will never last you. I mean, it, it, you, I'm lucky if I get five years out of this thing, but we'll see. <laughs> you know, um, they really are great for what for what you know the money you, you spend on them. If anything goes wrong, you just get another one. It's not going to break the bank, and that's what I like about them. And they're compact, they, they, they're perfect for a, a small garden where you want to ec economize on your space. Right. That's it. That's it. See you later.